favorite foodie is back. The third season is both a sequel and a prequel as the timeline bounces between the present day and 2004, giving us a glimpse of how that charming chatterbox gourmet became the way he is. Of course, a new season also means a new romance with a new neighbor, who also happens to be an old crush. Episode 1, First Meal We start off watching a man cook an elaborate steak and pasta dish for his girlfriend, which seems something like our hero would do. Except Gu Dae Young, Yoon Da Joon, is despondently sprawled out on his sofa, watching a cooking show on TV. It's clear he lives alone, and is only roused when his landlady reminds him that he has to move out at the end of the month. In the morning, Dae Young browses real estate websites. His boss catches him, reminding him that he should be focused on work. Dae Young, the guy who used to win awards for being the top insurance salesman, now has the lowest sales rate and hasn't met with clients in weeks. A familiar face stops by, season 2 Zan Chansu, Lee Ju Sung, who was the once creepy college student who lived on the rooftop. He reminds Dae Young that he promised to buy him a meal if Chan Su ever was in the area, so he's taking him up on the promise, is there a good restaurant nearby? As if he has to ask. Chan Su wonders why Dae Young insists on going to a restaurant that serves the same food as other restaurants they already passed, and Dae Young launches into one of his trademark tirades as he explains how this restaurant serves the best fresh croaker fish and how best to eat it, of course. The men happily tuck into their meal, proving that this season will give the same devoted love and attention to the food scenes as ever before. Chan Su wonders if Dae Young has always been the type to lecture during meals, but just as Dae Young's about to tell him how it all started, a car accident happens right outside the restaurant. That causes Dae Young to suddenly flash back to an accident of his own that happened sometime in the recent past. Everyone spills out of the restaurant to stare at the accident. One of the passers-by is Lee Ji Woo, Bak Jin Hee, who is walking her dog, a beautiful golden retriever named Kong Ali. Ji Woo is a nurse and jumps into action once she sees the injured people, tending to their wounds until the paramedics arrive to take everyone to the hospital. Ji Woo also goes to the hospital, momentarily forgetting about Kong Ali. The dog, however, sprints towards Dae Young, who thinks Kong Ali is about to attack him, but instead she covers his face with happy puppy kisses. The young patiently waits with the dog, hoping for the owner to come back, but at the mention of the word, home. Kong Ali leads him through the neighborhood, and to Ji Woo, who suddenly remembers that she'd left Kong Ali behind and hurries back to find her. Both Ji Woo and Dae Young are surprised to see one another, recognizing each other from college 14 years ago. He marvels that she's lost her country accent and now sounds like a solite, whereas she's impressed by his snazzy suit, remarking that he always used to wear dirty track suits. Ha. They head to a nearby cafe to catch up over a cup of coffee, and Ji Woo sees herself in the mirror for the first time. Realizing her hair is messed up, she's not wearing makeup, and her shirt sleeves are covered in blood from the accident. It's always the days you feel like the worst when you meet an old crush. Dae Young gives her a business card, and she's surprised that he's an insurance salesman, since when she knew him, he was majoring in mechanical engineering. She's still single, but she notices the ring on his finger, and assumes he's married. Dae Young says he's not, and vaguely agrees when Ji Woo says he must be seeing someone. Ji Woo has to get ready to work the night shift, so they agree to meet up later, to share a meal. Both Ji Woo and Kong Ali seem a little sad to watch Dae Young drive off. As Dae Young heads home, he smiles as he reminisces about his college life. Flashback to 2004, and a 20-year-old Dae Young sprawled on the floor of his small, crappy apartment, watching TV and eating snacks. Some things never change. Dae Young attends a freshman welcoming party for engineering students. Most of his sunbays are more interested in whether or not the freshmen have sisters than anything else they say in their introductory speeches. Other freshmen there are Bae Byung Sam, Kim Dong Young, no sisters, and is in fact terrified of women just in general, and Kim Jin Seok, Byung Hun, only brothers, and spent his life attending boys only schools. But while pretty boy Lee Sung Ju, Seo Byok Jun, doesn't have any sisters, he's friends with a lot of girls, which makes him the most popular freshman to his son Bae's. The trio is impressed that Jae Young has his own place, since his hometown is too far away to live with family, like the other boys do. Soon Dae Young's tiny basement apartment is a second home to all the boys, where they, too, sprawl on the floor, watch TV, and eat snacks. 
but during a particular rainy night, De Young's apartment is flooded, and they all wake up soaked like they slept in a bath. So all the boys help Dae Young move to a rooftop apartment, which seems ideal since there's no way it'll be flooded. But rooftop apartments are hot as hell in the summer, and as the boys fight over the fan, it breaks. Realizing they can't stay any longer in that sauna, which is hot enough to hatch chicks and potentially burst prize soccer balls, Dae Young decides to find another place to live. But first, a coffee break? The trio are baffled that Dae Young insists on only getting coffee from the music department's coffee machine. When they ask him why, he starts to ramp into a trademark Dae Young, how can you say all coffee machines are the same, detailed expository foodie rant, but he just sputters out a vague, it tastes better, just because. Ha. Huh. The boys are shocked to discover that Dae Young is moving to Myung Shin Villa, since everyone knows it's haunted, which is also probably why it's so cheap, that, or the lack of upkeep from the elderly landlords. Dae Young scoffs at the idea of ghosts and happily moves in. But his first night there, as he's watching TV, he hears strange laughter coming from somewhere. He assumes it's his neighbor also watching TV, but realizes that she wasn't even home at that time. His neighbor, by the way, is none other than a 20-year-old Ji Woo. She's got an adorable country accent, and reassures Dae Young that he must be hearing things because she lives alone. Despite his disavowal of ghosts, Dae Young finds it hard to sleep when he hears a strange crying sound, and then a rattling at the door. It doesn't help that his other neighbor is a shaman, who warns